All right, so let's use the intersection observer to create a scroll animation. So basically, if we scroll, it will just reveal some images, for example. You can also use it for lazy loading, for example. So it will be much more performant than just the scroll event in JavaScript because actually it won't be triggered every time you scroll, but only when an observed element comes into view. So you can go on a website I created called UI Delivery and you will find the source code. Okay, you can find the source code and you can use it uh, if you want. If you want to follow along with me, just create a folder with three files right there. Okay, so index.html, style CSS, and app.js. And we can code it together if you want. So let's go. Basically, we need to create an h1 with two span inside it. Span your style, your style, and our work. Okay, great. After that, a div with the class line and below it, a div with the class images container. So it will contain those images. You can just copy and paste it right there. Okay, to have the exact same images. So if you open with live server, we do have the images, great, but no animation, nothing yet, and no style yet. So you need to go to style CSS right there. And let's go. So there is just a little reset and some background and some padding, okay? So basically for the H1, we need a font size and we will use clamp to do something kind of responsive. So minimum 30 pixel, current 7VW, viewport width and max uh, 90 pixel, okay? Color FFF, display flex, flex direction, column for the span inside it, text transform upper uppercase, okay? justify center align center like that okay great so now with the clamp function in uh, css you see that it's kind of responsive there is a maximum there is a minimum and there is a kind of current value that is the in between value okay so it's very useful to do some responsive text okay so after that the different span span nth NT, child one a font weight of 700 and for the other one, whoops, control C, up. For the other one, so two right there, a font weight of 100. Okay, just so there is difference between the two. Okay, great. After that, we need to create a little line. So line with a width of one pixel, a margin of colk, 2VW plus 10 pixel. So it's a mix between absolute and relative value. So it's great if you want to create something responsive again. BG F1, F1, F1 and the height that will use the clamp function again with 125 minimum. T 10 VW, sorry, 10 VW and 250 pixel maximum, maximum. So now we do have a line right there that will shrink down. Great, and to finish, we need to take care of the image container, images container. So we will use display grid, we will use CSS grid. So max width of 800 pixel, margin zero auto. So it will be centered and we need to create our columns. So grid template columns repeat two, one, FR. Okay, and a grid gap, a gap of 10 pixel. Okay, great. So we do have one um, one grid right there. There is one grid, but the images are still too big. So we need to take care of them. Images container image with 100, height 100, and the magical property object fit cover. So they will cover the space allocated to them, okay? And then um, we will put a transition on opacity. 0 0.2 seconds is in out okay so is in out slow at the beginning and at the end and uh, normal normal speed uh, at the middle and by default they will be they will be hidden so like that but right now i still want to show you the grid so basically there is a grid right there if you inspect it if you inspect it um, you can click so this is kind of a new feature from the uh, the, the dev tools so basically in the elements panel, you can find the flex uh, container, the grid container. So if you just hover it, you see the different uh, cases, the different items right there. 
okay, the different cell. And if you click on grid, if you click on grid right there, up, you will see uh, much better. Okay, so there is one column right there, one other column right there. And so uh, then you, you do have some automatic rows inserted right there, right there, right there. Okay, and you can find um, row, uh, row lines right there, the row number lines, and also the, the column lines right there, one, two, three, which can be really useful. All right, so that's it for the CSS. And now it's time to create our JavaScript and to use the infamous intersection observer. So we need to take all the images because the, the, the images will be the elements that we want to observe and we want to uh, to animate. So const images equal document dot query selector all images container image. Okay, so it will return an odd list with all our images. So how can we use intersection observer? Well, const observer equal, we will use the uh, constructor new intersection, so intersection observer, just like that. And we need to give two arguments, the function that will be triggered when the element comes into view. So that will be handle intersect, for example, and an options object. Okay, great. So we do have our uh, a new object right there. We do have a new object if you just log it observer. So, um, oh yeah, handle intersect is not defined yet. So we need to define it indeed before using it. So we need to define the function and the option object. So the option object will be const options equal, uh, will be an object with some specific property. So by default, there will be root null. So what does that mean? It means that it will take the, um, the windows uh, how to say that the container will be the, the window if you want, but you can ch change that if you want to use an observer inside, um, for example, uh, small things, a small container, a custom container in HTML, you can put, for example, uh, my container right there. So just a, a new container, but by default, it will take the, the windows, uh, the windows. So by default, you don't need to put the root null right there. If you want to put some margin, you can put root margin for example, minus 10% zero. So basically it will put some uh, invisible margin at the top and at the beginning of 10% uh, of the screen. Okay, the, their height will be 10% of the screen. So basically it will trigger the, the element a little bit later. Okay, because there will be a little margin right there. Uh, understood like uh, th there will be a little um, margin where my mouse is right now, you see? That will be a little margin. Okay, so it, it can be great if you want to delay the animation. And you can put also a threshold threshold property. Threshold um, will trigger the, uh, the element when it comes into view at a certain point of its height. So it's a value between 0 and 1. And for example, if I put 0 0.4, it will be at 40%. Okay, so when the image will be at 30% uh, into the, the view. Okay, and you need to count the, uh, the, the the margin indeed. Okay, so when 40% of the image will be uh, will pass the, the root margin at the bottom. Okay, basically it's that. Great, so that's it for the options object. Then we need to create the function handle intersect. So it will take the entries. So the things that we want to uh, observe. Okay, so I will um, put something inside that function, but first I want to observe the different images. So images dot for each for each image I can use observer dot observe image so observer is the resu result of our constructor and it will give an observe so observe like that uh, method that will uh, just be used to uh, take uh, elements into account so if you want to watch for element if you want to watch for element okay so observe but basically if, if you want to to watch for element so whenever an element will come into play okay considering the 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 object right there it will trigger that function okay so now we can for example log the entries and we can try our work so we will start at opacity 0 right there Okay, I will open my up my uh, my dev tools. So fail to construct on any in pixel or percent. Yes. So right there, you need to put percent or pixel. You can't put zero like that, which is a bit dumb, but whatever. So just put zero pixel like that. Okay. And so if I just refresh, 
I see something right there. I see, whoops, I see an array with all the intersection observer entry. So basically, this is all of my images that I'm watching right now. You know, I'm, I'm watching them. And one of the images triggered the, the, the function. So basically, I'm logging all the entries, so all the images. If you open it, this is an object with some interesting property. You can find the bounding client rate, so bottom height, etc. some good measure. If you want to use them, you can see if uh, the element is intersecting. So if it came, it came, came into play, actually. So if, if it's on my window right now. So basically for the first, yes, it's true. But for the last one, for example, it's not true. Is visible false? Is intersecting false? Okay, it's not true because actually my two, my first two image are right there. Okay, so now I can play with those value and those properties if I want to create a little animation. So, whenever my function is triggered, is executed, I can do entries dot for each for each entry. I want to check my entry that is intersecting. Entry dot is inter intersecting so intersecting yes all right and then if uh, it's intersecting so if my images are right there i want to show them i want to uh, create my animation so i will just play with opacity actually so entry dot target dot style dot opacity equal one and tada we will see our first image all right and if you scroll down actually you will see that it's working it's working just fine it's waiting for the element to come into view and then it will just trigger that function and it will just change the opacity like that and if you change the root margin for a minus 30 percent for example they will uh, they will appear but much later actually you see that it's not appearing it's not appearing and it's appearing okay Great, great. So this is how uh, intersection observer works. So it's a, it's actually one example. It's one easy example, but you can do a lot of things with that um, that new API. Mm, I don't know if it's an API. I guess so. Intersection observer. I guess this is an browser API. Yes, this is an API. Okay. So this is an API inside of the browser. So you have access to it just by using the different browser. Indeed. All right, so see you for another video. You can find the source code in the description right there if you want to use it. Great, bye.